So you've probably heard people talk about MCP, right? But if you're still thinking, wait, what does diver mean, Esther? You're not alone. It took me a while to get it to. And in this video, I'm going to break it down in plain, simple English. What MCP is, why it matters, and how it actually works. So stick to the very end. What is MCP? MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. Now I know that this sounds somewhat complicated, but here's the idea. It's an open standard that was created by Anthropic in 2024. It helps LLMs like Claude, ChatGPT to connect to real-world tools, applications, and data. Normally, large language models are smart, but they have a limit. For example, they forget things quickly and they don't even have access to your data. Connecting an AI model to external sources is usually messy and repetitive. Developers would have to write custom code or use special plugins for each data source or API. And every time you do this, you are reinventing the wheel. So doing this over and over again is somewhat inefficient. So MCPs solve this limitation. They give a standard way of connecting AI models to real tools, applications, and data. For example, with an MCP, LLMs can get information from your calendar, your files, or database. They can use tools like GitHub or Google Drive. Now, you don't have to rebuild the same logic over and over again. You just follow the MCP format. There are four main core components of an MCP that you should know. The first is the MCP host. Now, the host is the application interface that a user interacts with. They are the LLM applications that receive your prompt. They understand what you want and then they decide what actions to take. So think of GitHub, Copilot Chat, Claude or Kusa. So the host is actually what you interact with. So when you type in a prompt, for example, write an article, the host decides what needs to be done and then starts the process. Now, it's important to note that the host doesn't actually do the task itself. It only decides what needs to be done and then tell someone else like the client to take care of it. So let's talk about the client. The client lives inside the host. It's that part that knows how to talk to MCP servers. So think of the client as that middleman that helps the LLMs communicate with the server. So here's what the client actually does. It takes the LLMs intention, for example, create a notion page. It packages it into structured format using MCP protocol. It then finds the correct MCP server. It sends the request to the server and waits for the response and then gives the result back to the AI in a way that it understands. So each client maintains a one-to-one -one relationship with the server. And without the client, the host wouldn't know how to reach the server or even how to structure its request. So let's look at the third component of an MCP, which is the MCP server. So the MCP server acts as a smart adapter that connects the LLM to real-world tools or applications. When an LLM wants to interact with a tool, whether that is like GitHub, YouTube, or a spreadsheet, the server acts as the middle layer that makes that communication possible. So it receives the request from the LLM through the MCP client, and then it translates it into something that the tool can now understand so it runs the command and sends the results back to the LLM, you know, what the LLM can use. So let me break this down even further. Imagine you travel to a country that you do not speak their language. And then you want to order some food because you're hungry. But then you need a translator to help you communicate with the waiter or less. There will be lots of confusion. You don't want that. So the MCP server is going to act as that translator. It's really the translator because it speaks both the language of the LLM and then the external data source of the application. So an MCP server can be built for just about anything. You can have it built for cloud-based applications like Notion, Google Sheets, or even Airtable. It can be for APIs or services like GitHub, Slack, or Stripe. You can even build an MCP for local applications and files on your own system, or even custom internal tools that your team or your company uses. The most important thing is, as long as the server follows the MCP protocol, it can plug into the LLM and expose the various capabilities in a standardized manner. 
Now, speaking of MCP protocols, that brings us to the fourth component of an MCP, which is the MCP protocol. The MCP protocol is like a common language that helps LLMs understand each other. It helps the LLM and the tool, that is the MCP client and the MCP server, understand each other. So it tells both sides how to send a request, what the message should look like, how to describe each action and what to do when there's an error. So it's important to have an MCP protocol because without this shared set of rules, the LLMs and the tools wouldn't know how to talk to each other. So MCP protocol makes sure that everyone is basically on the same page. Now, because the protocol is standardized, any tool or application that follows MCP protocol can work with any LLM or any AI that also supports it. In my next video, I'll walk you through how to set up a Notion MCP server step by step. So make sure to check that out. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, drop a comment and subscribe to my channel. Till next time, I'll see you in another one. Bye.